Welcome to Poker Life. Next question, Crispin. How are accusations of cheating addressed in the poker community? Poorly, very poorly. Poker players are extremely intelligent people, but when it comes to investigations and detective work, mm. it's totally inappropriate because poker players don't think in terms of evidence. They think in terms of probability. I think it's something like 90% that she is cheating. So when uh, there is a cheating accusation, various poker players will immediately hop on Twitter mm. and give their percentage chance that someone yeah. actually cheated. They'll say, I'm 90% sure that they have cheated or they're 95% that they have cheated. And they attribute probability as if it is outcome. So if they say on the balance of probabilities, they think that somebody cheated, even if there is no actual proof that they cheated, mm. that accused reputation will be massively damaged. Where's the probability come from? Well, where does that Out of thin air. I mean, oh. there was the famous case of Robbie Liu, who was accused by Garrett Alston of cheating because she called with Jack High. Uh, almost certainly, it was some kind of mistake on her part. She was embarrassed by it and looked bad on camera because she was embarrassed, right? There is no evidence, and evidence is not probability, guys. Evidence is evidence, you know. Does she have access to live stream? Can you prove that? Where is the links? Mm -hmm. And that was not ever shown. There was an investigation done by the House. Uh, they revealed the outcome of those investigations. There was a lot of interesting things that came out of that investigation, but not cheating on the part of Robbie Lou. And I think a majority of people now, a majority have accepted that, but there are people that will go Absolutely the wall say there's a 79.5% chance that Robbie Lou cheated. Guys, that is not how investigations are done. It's innocent until proven guilty and there's not a single ounce of proof that she did anything wrong. Mm. The more controversial one is Mike Possel. Mike Possel is so infamous as uh, apparently a cheater on Stone's Casino. His last name is now a verb. To possel is to kind of God mode. Okay. Um, because the accusation is that he ran so hot in his live stream that he had to have been cheating. And I don't accept that. No, God, please, no. That's not to say that I think he didn't cheat. It's not my place to say either way, except I can say definitively there is no evidence that he cheated right? There are people that say, well, you know, he made all these decisions on the stream that were irrational and so on. Yes, that is cause for alarm. You might want to put in additional safeguards to, to look into it, to begin mm -hmm. an investigation. But the only way to convict someone of anything is to show that they have actually committed a crime or done something wrong, right? And even to this point, nobody has demonstrated that he absolutely cheated. There are, they look at it in terms of their maths. They go, well, this is the probability that someone over this many hands would uh, achieve this through luck or whatever. And first of all, that's subjective because you don't see every hand that's played. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, even if that's true, it doesn't defeat the, the rules of evidence. Like, for example... Let's say you had a million people mm -hmm. flip a coin, okay? Half would get it right, half would get it wrong. You keep flipping that coin over and over and over again. Eventually, after dozens of flips, hundreds of flips even, you would end up with one person. Mm. Now, if you were just looking at that from the outside, you'd be like, that person's cheating. They're <laughs> predicting the outcome of a coin flip over and over and over again. And it would look like it was cheating because they were just... Doing something that seems mathematically impossible. But if you look at the world in terms of how many people play poker for money each year, mm -hmm. you know, 40, 50, 60 million people, well, one in a million runs have to occur, right? Yeah. It's, it's a statistical certainty. I'm not making any observation on, uh, on the possible case itself, except to say that it's not handled properly. Right. People need to investigate things, produce evidence, and if evidence can't be produced then we just have to accept mm. the case. You know, we can put in additional safeguards if we have suspicions about what might have happened to make sure that every possible avenue of safety is adhered to. But if you're going to destroy one person's reputation, 
there has to be done with evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really unfair, for example, what happened to Robbie Liu. And certainly there are cases where people have cheated. And if there are uh, people that are falsely accused, then that gives them cover to say, well, you know, I too was falsely accused. And, you know, they've been proven to be cheaters. But we have diminished that accusation. So one of my criticisms of the poker community generally, and there'll be people obviously who bitterly disagree with me, by assigning probabilities to whether someone has done something or not is just not the way jurisprudence works. You, you gather evidence, you find proof. If you can't find proof, they are innocent. Uh, that is the way Western common law operates. Uh, I don't like this kind of trial by publicity that we see from time to time, even though we should do everything possible to minimise the risk of cheating in any field. It sounds very toxic, and I can imagine it has a significant negative impact on the broader poker community That's, as a whole. That is... Yeah, you, have just, well, you, are, you are preaching to the convert. This is so important. Everything a poker player says publicly should be good for the game. Okay. If there's cheating going on, it's bad for the game to allow cheating to continue. So it is important to address that and call it out where it's occurring. But to sit there and speculate like some soap opera is terrible for the game. It makes poker players look churlish. Mm. It doesn't make it seem like a welcoming environment. It feels like some toxic Reddit thread. That's not what poker players should be about. They should just give people the benefit of the doubt until such time as there's proof otherwise and make sure that for recreational and professional poker players alike, it's a welcoming environment where everyone can feel at ease. And you're 100% right. When you've got pylons, uh, it looks toxic and it is toxic. So it's, just, it's really unfortunate because poker players are so much better than that.